Welcome to Rajendra Tandon videos. This episode deals with Angad, son of Wali, nephew of Sugriv, going as an emissary of Rama for peace. Please mark how all efforts were made to buy peace with Ravan, that the war was taken as an activity of last resort. In the meantime, it was decided to move the Vanar Sena forward to mount a well considered attack on Lanka. Rama, carrying his bow and arrows, led the forces. Bhivishan, Sugriv, Hanuman, Jambavan, Nala, Neel, and Lakshman followed him. The Vanaras, as large as elephants that could block an enemy's path, carried large rocks and large tree trunks. In a short while, they arrived at the gates of Lanka. I have included in this video some paintings from the British Museum to show the movement of forces as well as some of the fighting scenes. The detail is mind-boggling. In every painting, there are more than a few scenes showing different aspects of the happenings at the gates of Lanka as well as inside Lanka. Please look at them carefully and enjoy. Valmiki writes, Lanka was protected by massive ramparts and seemed impregnable. However, inspired by Ram, the Vanara soldiers surrounded the city and started making forays to its walls. The generals took the positions as decided earlier. The Vanaras were full of enthusiasm for the imminent fight and intended using their jaws and nails as their weapons to kill. Dark as the clouds, brave as Indra, the Rakshasas did not know what to make of the Vanar Sena. But they sensed danger owing to the Rukas created by the Vanaras. Their noise shook the ramparts gates, forests, orchards, and even the palaces and streets of Lanka. Having organized his forces ready for an attack on the enemy, Rama called a council of war to explore his options among the policies of Sam, Dam, Dand, and Bhed. After deliberation, with Bibhishana's consent, keeping in mind his Raj Dharma, writes Valmiki. He sent for the Prince Angada. Addressing him, Rama said, Soumya, Ravan has lost his Raja Lakshmi. He is set on the path of destruction and death. He has bid goodbye to his conscience, fearlessly crossing the rampart. Go to him and convey the following message on my behalf. You will relish every word of the language here. Valmuki was a master storyteller. O Rakshas Raj, you have committed a crime against the Rishis, the Devatas, and the kings under a false sense of pride. The time has arrived to destroy your insolence born of Brahma's blessings. You cannot digest the fruit of your evil deeds that I propose to present to you. As a ruler, I punish those who commit a crime. You have hurt me by abducting my wife. I stand at Lanka's doors to meet punishment to you. In case you fight me, I shall soon dispatch you to Yama's abode. Dharmatma Bhivishana, a noble Rakshasa, has accompanied me to Lanka. For sure, said Ram, he will be crowned the undisputed king of Lanka. You are an evil person unaware of your reality. Your supporters are fools and give you wrong counsel. Living a life without dharma, you cannot enjoy power anymore. I have a word of advice in your interest. Perform your shraddha. Give charity to acquire benefits in the other world. And cast a last loving glance at Lanka. Henceforth, Ravana, you live at my mercy. 
Angada, the son of Tara, shot like Agni, incarnate into the sky. Crossing the ramparts in no time, he arrived at Ravana's palace, where the king looked composed, held counsel with his courtiers. There are paintings which show him holding counsel with his courtiers. Standing near Ravana, Angad, who had put on golden bracelets, introduced himself and repeated Rama's wise words. He said, I am Wali's son. Angad and I come as Sri Rama's messenger. You might have heard of me. Raghava has sent a message for you. O cruel Ravana, come out and fight with me. I shall kill you, your ministers, your progeny, rendering the world fearless. If you do not bow at my feet and honorably hand over Sita, you will die at my hands, and this throne will be handed over to the righteous Bhivishana. Hearing Angada's harsh words, Ravan flew into a rage. At his command, Four of his ministers caught hold of Angada, who let him catch him. Then like a bird he flew through, still grabbed by the four captors. Mark the scene. And landed at the roof of the palace, high like a mountain. As he jumped, the four Rakshasas were shaken off and fell to the ground. Angada jumped repeatedly on the roof until he made a gaping hole into it. Then, roaring like a lion, he flew back and landed next to Rama. Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram. 